Welcome, Mindsetters, to this Learn Extra session for Grade 10 Maths. Today, we've got the lovely Dina here. <laughs> so, guys, I hope you're ready. I hope you're nice and set. You've got your notepads out, you've got your pens, your papers, and you're ready to make notes. Dina, what are we going to be doing today? Today, we're going to do that new section in Grade 10 that none of you have worked on before, and it's called Trigonometry. So, we're in for a good time this afternoon. All right, awesome. So, Dina, while you make your way across, I'm going to tell you. these guys where to find us. Guys, make sure you hit us up on the page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And guys, 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 you know the drill. I still have a calculator and a labeler to give away. And I'm trying to get these off my hands. So, guys, make sure, make sure you get those posts on the page. Because if you don't post, you don't win. So guys, make sure, make sure, if you're lost anyway, if you need help, get onto the page. And I'll, before we continue, so I want to send a quick shout out to Liberty. Thank you for sponsoring. And Dina, take it away. Thank you very much. Well, welcome, everybody. It's wonderful to be with you this afternoon and to be able to do one of the most exciting topics of mathematics ever, the relationship between the sides of the triangle and its angles. And it really is fantastic because it's one of those very useful topics in mathematics. And so I'm sure that you're going to have a very good time this afternoon. Before I jump in, though, I want to leave you with a question, which I really call the challenge question for the afternoon, so that some of you who may have already done this work in class um, would like to go on a little bit ahead and would like to give us the answer to the problem that's on the board. Um, and some of you might just be doing it for the first time. So join us for the first lesson on trig. So before we get there, here's the challenge question. We have triangle ABC and we have um, vertex D has got an angle of 41 degrees. We then have DCB as a line segment of 17 units. We've got AC that's perpendicular to um, BD and length is 9. And the question is really asking us to find the angle ABC. So I'm just going to write that information over here is that angle D is 41. And this is all that you need to write down on your piece of paper while you're working at it. Uh, we have BD is 17 units. We have AC is perpendicular to DB. And then we have that AC is equal to 9 units. And our question is, what is the magnitude of angle ABC. What is its size? Okay. Right, so what's the size of that angle ABC? Okay, just to go over it once more. Angle D is 41, BD is 17 units, AC is 9, you've got AC is perpendicular to BD, and you'd like to find out what the size of ABC. Okay, if you're onto trig, why not get going on that question and post your answers on the Facebook page. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to go on to um, our first introduction of trigonometry. Okay, and as I said um, earlier, trigonometry has got the root word is tri, which comes from the word triangle. And it's a Greek word with origins in the measurement. And when you look at a triangle, what is it that you can measure? Well, you can measure the length of the sides and you can measure the size of the angles. So you've got three sides, you've got three angles, and you can measure those things. And when we look at the interlinking relationship between the sides and the angles, what are the relationships that exist, then we talk about the trigonometry, the study of those relationships. We're going to begin in grade 10 by looking at the right angle triangle. So as we move on, um, uh, later on into grade 11, we'll look at other size triangles. But for now, we are going to really just focus on the basic unit, which is the right angle triangle. Now, the trigonometry really originate just with triangles or did it really come from somewhere else? And I'm going to take you back to the work that's been done on straight lines because there is a link between the, the measurements that we do in trigonometry and um, what we've worked with algebra before. And you'll see a very interesting link and we'll, sh we'll show it to you in a, in a little while. Okay, and the link is if I have a line and I asked you, how steep is that line? You probably would say something like, well, not very steep. Or some of you may say, hmm, I think the gradient might be a half. 
Um, some of you might say, well, no, I'm not so sure. I think the gradient may be about, about just smaller than one. So you could describe the steepness in terms of words, or you could describe the steepness in terms of um, the gradient of the line. And for us to really have a, a good gauge of how steep that line is, we would probably draw in a horizontal line because a steepness is always calculated from a horizontal. Um, if I want to know how steep some, something is, I will um, coordinate my thinking around having a, a starting place, a, a horizontal, for example. And so if I asked you how steep is that line, you would look at the horizontal and you'd probably say something like, well, if I go from one point on the line to the other point on the line, my steepness is maybe one unit up and two units across. So you could say that this line is, has got a gradient of a half and that would be your steepness. Okay, but in mathematics, we also refer to this angle as the angle of steepness, the angle that that line makes with that horizontal. And there is a relationship between that angle and the gradient. So the gradient of this line is a half, and I've made it as a one to two ratio because it looks like that line is double that one. So I've, I've given you a gradient. And I've also said that to indicate how steep this line is, I would give that an angle to differentiate it from, let's say, this line. Okay, because this line steepness would maybe now have a vertical distance of two and a horizontal of one. So the bigger your y value in relation to your x, uh, your change in x, the bigger your change in y in relation to your change in x, the steeper that line's going to be. And that steepness um, shows itself in terms of the angle that this line makes. So our next question is, well, can I find that angle? Well, of course, you can draw a triangle, you can take your protractor, you can measure it, and you can find the size of the angle. And you're most welcome to do that at home, to, to take an, an exercise and just to measure those angles. You can certainly find those angles. But in mathematics, we've got a function that is going to connect finding the angle to that relationship a half or to that relationship two. So every gradient will have a connecting, um, let's say, function that will actually give you what that angle is without measurement. And that's the beauty of maths, is that we can do everything with pen and paper and measurement, etc. but we've also got these beautiful functions that allow us to calculate those things um, much more efficiently. Okay, so the, the relationship that we now find is that this gradient of a half is going to have a connection to this angle. And I don't know if some of you want to guess what that angle is, but um, maybe we're looking at an angle just less than 30 degrees. Okay, that's a pretty good estimate, angle of less than 30 degrees. And let's see what the calculator gives us. And the calculator has got a special function that gives us those values. And the function, I'll show you a little later what it is, but I'm gonna put in that 0, 0,5, that gradient of a half, and I'm gonna say, please tell me what that angle is. And it gives us an angle of 26,5. So remember, we s estimated that angle as 30. Well, the angle is actually equal to 26,5 degrees. Okay, now isn't that magic? I've been able to utilize a program value in the calculator to give me, if my gradient is a half, how steep is that line? Fabulous, isn't it? Well, let's learn more about these functions and their names and how you can connect these sides. Um, because I've just created this uh, beautiful uh, picture here, but we now need to just root it in the right angle triangle. So our next page is going to show that when you have theta, by the way, the, the, the angle sizes, 
um, are referred to as letters of the Greek alphabet. So we'll have thetas, we'll have betas, we'll have alphas uh, as the three main angle sizes that we work with, um, just to differentiate them from the sides. So the sides will be A, B, Cs, and then the angles will be the Greek letters of the alphabet. Okay, so there we've got our right angle triangle, and theta being the size of my angle, and I'm referring to, or I'm calling the tangent as that function that has the gradient as the side opposite over the side adjacent. Now the side opposite theta in a right angle will always be the side that is opposite that, which would be that side over here. The side adjacent would be the side that's next to. Now you'll notice that there is this side and there is this side that's adjacent. So where, um, which one are we going to call adjacent? Well, what do we call the side that's opposite the right angle triangle? You see, this side doesn't shift. It is always the hypotenuse. Okay, and because it's the hypotenuse, it cannot be both adjacent and hypotenuse. So your first job is always to look for that hypotenuse. Because once you've got the hypotenuse, you'll be able to talk about the other two sides in terms of its position relative to that angle. Okay, so we have the side opposite the angle, which would be this one. And we would have the side adjacent to the angle, which would be this one. And remember, that the hypotenuse cannot be two things at the same time, it can only be one thing, it's hypotenuse, then it can't be the adjacent. Okay, adjacent meaning lying next to. Adjacent is the word that says I'm next to something. Okay, so now that we've defined the positions of each of the three sides, remember if I change my angle, those positions will also change. Okay, then the tangent of the angle would be equal to the side that's opposite the angle divided by the side that's adjacent to the angle. And so the tangent is a function that's defined as a ratio. One side divided by another. It will always be a fraction. It will always be two sides. And that function that will get you that angle in terms of those two sides and how they've been expressed is what we call the function tangent. Mathematicians have given it the word tangent. And we talk about the function as the tangent of the angle that you've specified. So if I go and specify another angle, then I will have the tangent of that angle in terms of those two sides. So two things are critical here. One, the position of the angle, and two, the sides in relation to the angle. Okay, so when you have the side opposite divided by the side adjacent, we've got the tangent. When we have the side that's opposite the angle and we're now dividing it by the hypotenuse. So if we took this length and we divided it by that length, we no, look in, we're no longer looking at an opposite adjacent relationship, we're looking at an opposite hypotenuse relationship to the angle and we then give it the name sine theta. If we then take this further, this idea further, and we take to the two other sides, this adjacent and this hypotenuse, and we look at them in terms of adjacent divided by hypotenuse, then we get what we call the cosine of theta as a sine adjacent to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. So notice carefully how important it is for us to position ourselves and then decide which of the sides will be opposite to us and which of the sides will be adjacent to us. Okay. Right, so in short, and this is what you've got on your calculator, we will always talk about the tan of theta, understanding that the function is called tangent. The sine of theta, understanding that it's um, sin, and then the cos of theta um, is the cosine of the angle. And then some people have said, to remember those, those words, we would write sine as opposite over hypotenuse, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so to remember, we would remember this acronym called SOKOTOA uh, to remind us that whenever we're working with the sine function, 
we will work with those pair of, of sides. The cos function will work with that pair of sides and the tan function will work with the, the opposite adjacent pair of sides. And that was must remember as definitions. So if we look at our calculator, um, you will see the functions as sine, cos and tan. And we worked out earlier that if we've got 26 degrees, our gradient is a half. So if we work out the function of 56 degrees, then we should get a half. And there it is. There's a half there. So the function goes and fetches the ratio for the angle that you've actually got given. So the calculator's got sine, cos, and tan. That's all they have. Okay. Right. Furthermore, we would like to look at um, what happens when we take the reciprocal functions. So if we took, for example, we took adjacent and we divided by the opposite, there's no way that we'll be able to get to tan because tan is fixed as the opposite of adjacent. Mm -hmm. So when you switch the values, in other words, you're taking the reciprocal, then we talk about the cotangent. And notice that the cotangent is not on your calculator because the cotangent is the reciprocal. So to work this on your calculator, you would actually use the reciprocal function, which is x to the minus 1. So that would give you a reciprocal. So the calculator doesn't have reciprocals. So you'll need to rem rem remember them. Okay, so if we took the hypotenuse and we divided by the opposite, we would go, we would get. Um, we'll take that now. Let's look at the cos as well. We'd have h over a as a reciprocal. So these and those they're all reciprocals. What do we call those functions? Okay, this one would be called, it's got a strange name, cosecant of theta, and this one is called the secant of theta. Okay, so those are the six names. This one's in short, tan, sine, cos. Those I've given the, you in long, so if I gave you the reciprocals in short, it would be the cot of theta, the cosec of theta and the sec of theta. So those are the six um, basic trig ratios that you'll be working with. Um, for our next section, when we're looking at how to work with right angle triangles, um, we will try and stick to the three basic ones because they're just easier to, to refer to because on the calculator you only have one function rather than the reciprocal function to utilize with cots, cosec and sec, but we will use those um, later on as well. So I'm going to hand it over to our master. Okay. So guys, you know the drill. Make sure, make sure, make sure you get on the page. The page is a bit quiet, which is not something I like, you know, because I can't help you guys if you guys aren't talking to me on the page. So guys, make sure, make sure, make sure you keep posting on the page. If you're lost anywhere and need help, please, please. I know there's a very important section, so I know, guys, there's a lot more questions out there than you guys are posting. But for now, we're going to see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. You went and got yourself some snacks. You went to the bathroom. You did whatever you did so that you don't have to get distracted again. Because, guys, 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 I just need to say, keep posting on the page. It's a bit quiet. I can't give away this calculator and label it if you guys don't post. But you know what? For now, I'm going to hand it straight back to Dina so we can get on. All right. Thanks, Ty. Yes. Right, folks, um, let's get back with it. I gave you quite a lengthy vocabulary lesson and definitions of how we got to the trigonometry. And we're now going to put it in practice. We're actually going to see where is it actually applied and how is it applied and how is it useful. Um, and I think before we go there, just for those of you that might have joined us late, let's just look at the question, the challenge question, which we'll do at the end. Um, and there's a challenge question. We've got triangle ABC, we've got angle D is 41, we've got length BD 17, we've got AC perpendicular to BD with AC as 9. 
and then we want to find out what is the size of A, B, C. So for those of you who haven't yet uh, had a chance, why not spend some time on that and post your answer? We'll see at the end of the show who was able to get that magic angle of A, B, C. Right, back to the lesson. And where we use these, uh, this trigonometry, well, we could use it in a very simple um, triangle that you've seen before. In a right angle triangle, what do we call the side that is opposite the right angle? Okay, we call it the hypotenuse. And I'm going to give this triangle some labels. So we're going to have A, B, C. So therefore, B, A must be the hypotenuse, okay? And in a right angle triangle, when two of the sides are three, four, then it's the, that special, special right angle triangle um, that we, s we so often use, the three, four, and the hypotenuse, obviously, five. So we've been able to use Pythagoras, uh, Pythagorean triple, three, four, five, to work out what the size is. But you've never, up to this stage, been able to calculate the size of the angle uh, theta, or the size of angle beta, or B that's sitting on that triangle. You've not been able to do that before. Trig is that one um, topic that it enables you to find angles. So with lengths of sides, if we have at least two in a right angle triangle, then we are going to be able to find that angle. Okay. And I'd, li I'd like to give you um, something to hook your ideas onto. So we're going to use that acronym I showed you earlier, that SOKOTOA, to be able to develop a pattern of finding um, how to find these angles. Okay, so if we had to write down the pattern so Katoa, and we now position, we're going to position ourselves at angle theta because that's where we are, then do you agree that this side here would be the hypotenuse? Okay, what would we call the three in relation to where I'm standing? And what would we call the four in relation to where I'm standing? I'm calling that the side that's opposite theta, and that's the side that's adjacent theta. So I have, do you agree, the opposite, and I have the adjacent. So I would go to my Sokotoa, and I would say, what have I got? I've got my adjacent, and I've got my opposite. So since I've got those two sides, I must definitely be using the function called tangent. Okay, so that's what you basically do. You go to the picture, you decide what information you have, and from that information, you will then know which function to use. So since we've established that we've got tan, we would then write that the tangent of where I am, which is at theta, function, angle where I am, always function, tan by itself is really useless. Because unless you know where you're positioned, you're not going to be able to have an opposite and an adjacent side. So there's got to be a tan followed through by an angle. Or there's got to be a sine followed through by an angle, or a cos followed through by an angle. Those functions as standalones are absolutely meaningless. Okay, so remember to have an angle attached to the function. The angle is the position that you have fixed yourself at. Right, so the tan of theta would be always, and you can write down, it would be your opposite over your adjacent, and in this case, it would be 3 over 4. Now, that's 3 quarters. Remember earlier on in the show, we had a half, we had a, a ratio of a half, which was opposite over adjacent, and it gave us an angle of 26 degrees. So if I've increased my gradient to 3 quarters, then surely I'm increasing that size of that angle. Okay. Anybody want to guess what three quarters would give us? What angle size we would get? Let's have a look what the calculator says. Right, so we go to our calculator, and now we would have the function that goes and fetches the angle. Because now you've got tan, you've got tan of theta. So your job is what is the size of the angle? Okay, what's the size of theta? Okay, and to forget that, you will use the calculator and to find any angle, you will always use the tan to the minus one button. That's your angle button. Okay, so this would be our angle button. 
So I'm going to go and show this to you on the calculator. So as they stand, the sine, cos, and tan, they would give us the actual ratio. So if I gave you an angle, it would give you the, the ratio back. But the yellow functions, the sine to the minus 1, the cos to the minus 1, tan to the minus 1, they are not reciprocal functions. They are angle buttons. So the white buttons are our ratios, and the yellow buttons are our angle buttons. So we're now wanting to find the size of the angle, so we're going to get our angle button, which is the yellow button. So you've got to make sure that 10 to the minus 1 is written down there. And we want to get a ratio of 3 quarters. So we've got a 3 and we've got a 4. And we want to know what is the angle. There we go. 36,8. Isn't the calculator clever? Okay, very clever machine indeed. It will be able, to, it's got all the angles programmed for you. Okay, right, so the angle button, the size of angle theta, we would always use, we would always use our angle buttons, and theta in this case, we've worked out as 36, comma, do you remember what that was? I'm going to make it 9, 36, 9. Now, we've got angles. If you think about your protractor when you're measuring angles, an angle of 36 degrees would make sense to you. Maybe even 36, 5 would make sense to you. But the moment you've got 36, 9, it's very, very close to 40. You can't actually see that, 9 on your protractor. It's not like millimeters where you can actually see the millimeters. So an angle, you should always round off one decimal place. Two decimal places, it's really not, not useful when working with uh, the geometry or the trigonometry that we're working with, unless you really are fine-tuning um, map work or you, you are doing some architectural work um, or buildings or something like that where maximum accuracy is required. But usually in the calculations that you do from a textbook, usually one decimal is sufficient. But the instruction and the context in which you're working with will always dictate how many decimals you should have. So in this context, where I'm just telling you, if I've got a, a, a gradient of three quarters and I want to know how, how steep my line is, then 36 degrees, 37 degrees would be a good answer to give for that three quarters. Okay, now I want to go back and to show you how you could um, now find out how we can get back to three quarters. Okay, so we've told the calculator, give me the angle that gives me three quarters. But you'd like to say to it, hey, hang on, give me the tan of 36, 8, which you're expecting to be three quarters. Let's see if the calculator's clever. There we go, three quarters. Okay, so they are inverse functions of each other. They undo each other. So I can find an angle but I can also find the ratio that gives me that angle. So there's a connection between the angle and the two sides of the triangle. And that is the beauty of trig, the relationship between the angles and the two sides of the triangle. So we can find the angle. Let's go and find the angle of that answer. Gives me 36. Or I can find the 3 quarters of the answer. Gives me 3 quarters. There we go. All right. Okay, so... We could now um, do a couple more examples. And okay, from the uh, Sia Villa book, we have picked up an exercise that says in each triangle, find the length of the side marked with a letter and give answers correct to two decimal places. Now, I've just spoken to you about the decimal places with angles. Angles, one decimal place is enough. Can you see this context requires you to round things off to two decimal places? Just a warning, just a, a word of caution. Um, when you have multiple steps, so one step, answer is required in the next one and maybe a further step of calculation. Don't round off in between. You must keep your answer in memory because your angle error or your side error, whatever answer error, is going to accumulate and you might get quite a drastic um, different answer at the end, which in mathematics could be 
the reality between a building standing up or, or falling down. So be very careful um, with not rounding in the middle, but only at the end. Okay, so we've got this triangle and we've got a side of uh, 37. Let's just um, go down a little bit here. Okay. Right, so as I said earlier, we had, I'm going to write our Sokotoa up here. And let's position ourselves. Position is everything to us, so let's position ourselves over here. That's where the angle is. Um, first thing, where's the hypotenuse? Have you located it? 62 is my hypotenuse, okay? Um, and so if 62 is my hypotenuse, remember that one can't change, then what is staring at us? What is A? Okay, that's the side that's opposite. Okay, so we've got an opposite side that we want to find, and we've got a hypotenuse that we've got. So we would have this relationship. Um, let's look here. We've got the hypotenuse and the opposite. So we've got here. We've got to find the opposite and we've got the hypotenuse. So we're going to work with sine. So by always going to the acronym, you'll be able to find out the two sides, the given, maybe both are given, or maybe one's given and one's you've got to find out, but two sides you must have some information about, whether you want to find it or whether you have it. And when that happens, then I'm going to say that the sine, the sine, of my 37 is now equal to my A over my 62. Okay, and from that equation, once you've set up the equation, you must remember that you've got three quantities you're working with. You're working with your position, which is your angle. You're working with your two sides. So if you're trying to find any of one of those three, you must fill in two of them in order to be able to solve the equation. Okay, so I'm just going to write this equation a little further down here. So sine 37, so that you can see it. Okay, so we've now got sine 37 degrees. Remember, sine without an angle means absolutely nothing, is equal to A over 62. So you've got a fraction A over 62. You want to find the numerator. How do you do that? How do you find the numerator if you know the denominator? You times across by both sides. So you've got A equals 62 times sine 37. Okay. So you've now got a, a lovely expression over here that we can use on our calculator. Okay, so it's 62 times sine 37. Watch carefully. I'm going to clear this. It's 62 times sine of 37 equals. Okay, so you've got a 37,31,25. What did the question ask us to do? To write it, write it off to two decimal places. So 3, 1. Okay, so... Let's just um, do that again. I want to show you that you could have 62 times sine of 37, and we'd still get the same answer. So calculator is very clever. It doesn't actually need the brackets. It recognizes that if you've got a coefficient of 62, it will automatically multiply it by the sine of 37. Obviously, if you had something else after the angle 37, you'd need to be careful because it would affect that answer quite substantially. All right, so therefore A is... Three one. Three one. Okay, round it off to two decimal places. All right, let's look at the second one. And I'm going to erase the Sokotoa because every time you have a new question, you'll start with Sokotoa all over again. 
so cos 10. Okay, so position, here's 23 degrees, here's my position. Okay, so I've got my angle. B is what in relation to 23? It's my opposite, okay? And 21 is what in relation to my 23 degrees? It's my adjacent. So therefore, we have again a tan ratio because we'd like to find the opposite, but we have the adjacent. So we can now define the tan in terms of 23 would be equal to our B over 21. Okay, let's take it down and let's work with that. Tan 23 Let's work with white. Tan 23 equals B over 21. How am I going to solve for B? It's a fraction. I'm going to get rid of the denominator and multiply both sides by 21. So we've got B equals 21 times the tan of 23 degrees. Remember, every trig function has got to have an angle attached to it. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Right, we're ready for the calculator. So we have 21 multiplied by the tan of 23 degrees. And what do we get? 8,913. So I'm going to round it off to 8,91. Correct to two decimal places. 8,91. And be careful what you're working with. Is B in degrees or is B in units? Okay, only the, the value that comes after the function is in degrees. The others are all values that are degreeless because they're not angles. So always watch what you're working with. I was working the side of a triangle, hence I don't have any degrees attached to that B value. Okay, right, we'll do one more. Uh, let's go up. Let's see what this one is all about. Right, so let's take Sokoto for this one here. What do we have? What do we have to find out? Well, first of all, the position, there's my angle. I have my hypotenuse. I'd like to find my adjacent. So here I have adjacent and hypotenuse. And so I've got the cos of... 55 is equal to my adjacent, which is C, all over my hypotenuse, which is 19. And my calculator can say, can then tell me that I've got 19 times the cos of 55, and that gives me 10, 897, so it's going to give me a 10, 90. So C, C equals 10, 9, 0. Since it's two decimal places, you must have those two values. Even if it's a 0, you must have that 0 there. Okay, I think it's time for a break. Um, okay. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I can understand the confusion. She's also got long hair, kind of. <laughs> but anyway, guys. Make sure, make sure you guys are getting, I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to like, I'm seeing a lot more posts, which is good, which is good. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Cause guys, I still have to give away this calculator and this labeler. So guys, keep posting, keep posting. But for now, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll see you just now. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. You took your time, got your snacks, you got everything that you need so you don't need to get up because this last session is very, very important. We're going to try and put as much as we can into the session. So guys, make sure you're paying attention. Pens, pads, paper, out, and you're writing notes. I can't stress that enough. And yes, I'm still giving away these calculators, so post, 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 post. But for now, I'm going to hand it over to Dina. Take Thanks it away. Time. Thank you, Ty, and it's good to see some of you really attempting the challenge question. I think I'm going to do a little bit more of trig, and then maybe in the last two or three minutes of the show, we'll go over that question. Hopefully, I can squeeze it in uh, to make sure that you were able to get that challenge question. 
Okay, for now, I want to look at the application of trigonometry within an aspect um, of angles of elevation and depression, and I'll show you an example so that I can clarify the meaning of those words. So, an angle is measured from horizontal, and wherever the person is looking, so if they're looking up, you will talk about an angle of elevation, so the steepness of that line of sight, and if you look down, it's called an angle of depression, but you must be at a horizontal to be able to measure those angles. Okay, got that. Right. So the question is as follows. A block of flats is 200 meters away from a cell phone tower. Someone stands at the position and they measure the angle from B to the top of the tower. So this would be an angle of elevation. And they then measure the angle from B to the bottom of the tower would be an angle of depression. Okay, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you've got mathematics and mathematics is depressed. It's not like that at all. It's just the fact that you're lowering it down. And the question is, what is the height of the cell phone tower? Now, I've got a, l a diagram to depict that scenario. So we've got the block of flats. We've got the block of flats right here. And we've got a 200 meter tower from the um, block of flats. And here's the person at B. And they're looking up from this horizontal. Okay. And if they're looking up, then their line of sight, which we can measure with a theodolite, is actually 34 degrees. The angle that they make with the horizontal going down, so he's looking at the bottom of the tower, that would be the angle of depression. Now, the nice thing about this horizontal line is that you've got the ground, which is parallel to that line of sight. So this distance of 200 would be the same as that pink line of 200. Now, the question is, what is the height of the cell phone tower correct to the nearest meter? So we would like to know how, uh, what is the size of length EC, basically. And can you see how mathematics can be modeled according to what's happening out there? So we can take a 2D picture of what we're seeing in 3D and be able to work out what these um, heights and angles, etc., are. And that is the power of trigonometry. All lines that you construct at angles within right angle triangles are, are able to be calculated um, by using um, this wonderful tool called trigonometry. Okay, so our job is to find this length over here. And so where shall we begin? Well, since all we have is this blue angle and this length over here, I think we can safely say that alternate angles are equal. So this angle over here would also be 62. By calculating that um, angle, we now have that the height of the building, this AB, I can work it out because I'm in a right angle triangle. So I could work out what this uh, length AB is. So I could find AB. And once I've got AB, buildings, I'm hoping, would be, I could track them. And I could say that this distance over here would be the same as AB. We then have that this length over here is also 200. So, which means that if I could work out what this length is, then our pink and our blue distances added together would give me that big distance. So, in a complex picture, okay, earlier on we only worked within one triangle. In a complex picture, I can actually, actually divide them up into spe specific uh, right angle triangles and only work in them in order to work out the subsequent or the adjacent information. Okay, so let's use our trigonometry in order to work out AB. Let's see. Here's my angle. This is my adjacent and this is my opposite. So, therefore, my AB over 200 
and let's get all this in the same color, so it's 200, would actually give me the tan of 62. Do you see why? Because I have the adjacent and I want opposite. If I took Sokotoa, then I would get that my relationship that uses opposite and adjacent is my tangent, so I would get tangent of 62 degrees, which means that AB's distance is equal to uh, 200 times tan of 62. So we take 200 times the tan of 62. And that would give me 376,145. So that's 376. Okay, comma. I'm just going to include, I'm just going to say dot, 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 because I'm not going to round it off. Remember, earlier we um, spoke about how important it is not to round off this to 377, for example, because a meter could have quite a difference to play um, in how high that, that height is. So we don't want to play with rounding off in the middle. We want to round off at the end. Okay, and then in the pink triangle, let's see, we've got this angle, we've got the adjacent, and we want to find the opposite. So again, we want to find the opposite. So we want to find ED. So ED would, in this case, be divided by 200 would be the tan of 34. Okay. So ED on our calculator ED would be equal to we take our calculator. So we have 200. Let's just see. 200 times the tan of 34. What would that give us? Oh, didn't like that at all. 200 times the tan of 34. That's better. One three four comma nine. Um, okay, so that's one three four comma nine. Okay, and so therefore my blue and my pink would then be. I'm going to add on the two hundred times my tan of 62, which I've lost along the way. So I can just get it back. So I get an answer of 511, comma, 0, 05, correct, two decimal places. So we will have the tower. Okay, let's just move that. Okay. Right, so this whole tower over here is 511 meters, roughly. Okay, right, I'll leave it at that um, because I would like to go over the challenge question. Let's go over that quickly. Okay, what did you do? Okay, you'll notice here that I have to work with right angle triangles. I've got DS41, I've got that as 17. Um, I would like to get to the size of angle B. All I have is 9, so therefore I definitely need either BC or I need AB. I think the, the probability is to be able to get BC because um, I've got this right angle triangle right here, ABC. So you have to hunt for the right angle triangles. You can't just work with... Um, Right, so we've got this right angle triangle right here. You would have, if you wanted to find out what this side is, the adjacent, you would um, have the tan of 41 would be 9 over DC. So DC would be 9 over tan 41. I need my help. I need my calculator. So 9 divided by 10 of 41 
would be equal to 10,35. So that would be 10,35. Okay. And then that's 17. So if I minus 17 from that, I would get 6,646, 6, or 6,647. Um, so 6, 6, 6,46. And then in this triangle over here, I would now have this as 6,46. And I would have the tan of B is 9 over 6, 46. So working on the calculator quickly, we'd have 9 divided by 6,46. I think it was that. Uh, equals, and we'd have to find the angle of the answer. So we get 54,3. Um, if I'm not mistaken if that was in fact 6,46, if the arithmetic is correct. For those of you who were able to get 54,3, well done, you're really smart. All right, so guys, hope you had a nice, exciting session. I hope that was very helpful for you. And I know for some of you out there, this was your first introduction to Trig, so I hope it was nice and, and, and you guys got your info, you got your info and all your, all your stuff. And guys, remember, remember, I'm still giving away these, so I'm going to be scanning through my page to find out who, was the, who had the best post. And best believe, I'm going to make sure you guys get this stuff. And for me, I'm going to say peace, and you guys take care, and we'll see you next time.